Hey guys, how's it going? So today I wanted to show you how I made this super cool trotso style planter out of paper creep. So I did include different flecks of colors here and I'll show you how I did that later on in the video. And as you can see, the perlite white flecks are coming through as well as the different colored flecks and I used a different type of sealer in this video that I'm really excited about. It worked so well, and this is the gloss version of it. So as you can see, it is shiny and beautiful, and I'm happy with how it turned out. And if you're interested in learning how I did it, keep watching. So the first step was creating the different colored flecks, and I did this by using a product called Thin Set. I've mentioned Thin Set in my other videos, and I think some people are unfamiliar with it, and what it is, it's a cement-based adhesive that is used in the construction industry. Uh, that's what they use to adhere tiles and things like that, like a backsplash, tile flooring, that kind of stuff. Um, that's what they use as the adhesive. Um, the reason I use this instead of just using regular cement is because it's readily available in white, and that way you get a true color. So if you have Portland cement, that is white you could use that as well but i know that's hard to come by and if you have any sort of home improvement store like a home depot or lowe's you can get your hands on thin set that is white pretty easily and it's not too expensive for a a, a pretty good sized bag of it so um, that's why i'm using this product and it is essentially portland cement with added um, like adhesive properties into it. We're not really using the adhesive properties in this application, but I have used it in my videos before as like a, a top layer coat on things. And, and I do use it a lot in my mosaics as my adhesive. So I had it on hand and decided to try it out for this video. I used three colors of acrylic paints that I had on hand that I thought would look um, cute together. What you want to do with your thin set is read what your package says. Every package is going to be a little bit different, but at this point I just kind of eyeball it with the water and I get it to a point where actually I would say it was more on the liquidy side for this application because you are going to uh, eventually you'll see that I spread it on parchment paper pretty thin so that when it's dry, it can be crumpled up into different little pieces. I would say mix it more on the watery side, maybe like, um, like a yogurt or something consistency rather than like peanut butter consistency. Once you've mixed it thoroughly, making sure that all of the chunks are out. I mean, I still had some chunks. It's kind of hard to get all the chunks out, but you want to try and make it as smooth as possible. And then you can add your color and some people do say it's best to let it slake, which is just letting it sit for like 15 minutes so that all of the, the chemicals are doing what they need to do. And then I laid parchment paper down and I smoothed it over the parchment paper. I could have almost doubled what I made. Um, I think based on how it turned out, I could have used even more of these little flecks. Uh, the thing is with this is, you have to let these dry first, so by the time I was going in with the paper crate, it was a little bit too late to make more of them. But I would say err on the side of making more than you think you might need because you don't always you don't have to use them all um, right away. Like you could actually make these well in advance and make like a bunch of different colors well in advance to use in your projects later on. So this is what it looked like when they were dry. It took a couple days for them to dry because the weather right now is kind of cold, so they're not drying out as quickly as they probably would during summer. Um, so once they're completely dry, they'll be like crispy, crunchy, and this is really fun actually to just um, fold over the paper and crumple it up. I prefer the look of having different sizes, so some big chunks, some small chunks, and have kind of variation in sizing. So then I use this wooden spoon to kind of break apart some of the really big chunks and got it to the sizes that I wanted, and this is how it turned out. I think they look really cool all together. I'm kind of obsessed with this. I'm excited to try it with a bunch of different color combinations. So now that that part's done, it's time to actually get the paper creek going. So this is the mold that I'm gonna be using to make my pot, and I've used it in a previous video, and I really like the size. And if you're not new here, you know what comes next. It is the paper crete recipe, which is three parts paper pulp, two parts Portland cement, and one part perlite. 
I seem to get a lot of questions about perlite on this channel. People ask what is it and also can you replace the perlite with styrofoam beads. So perlite is something that is used mainly in gardening so I think it is a like type of volcanic glass that aids in water retention but also drainage so it keeps the soil moist but also like it doesn't keep it super wet so that's why people will add it to their soils as an amendment type of thing it is very lightweight and it totally looks like little styrofoam beads like that you would see in a bean bag or something and people ask me I get a lot of comments on this channel, can you replace the perlite with styrofoam? And the answer to that is, I don't know. And I feel like in theory, yes. The only thing that would be different is that it is not, like, styrofoam doesn't absorb water like perlite does. So it would kind of change, it would change the properties of the papercrete mixture. I don't think that would be a bad thing, but I'm gonna have to test it out and I will be testing it in an upcoming video. Um, we'll see how it works in the paper creep mixture. So once you have the recipe all mixed together and well combined, it's time to add the fun little chunks of color. Now, once that's really well mixed, you're gonna wanna do a test for your paper creep. And uh, the way I test to make sure it is the right level of moisture and consistency is I make a ball in my hands and I com compact it together like so and then I'll just kind of gently toss it up in the air and let it land in my hand and if it stays together in a ball then it's good it has the right amount of moisture but if it kind of crumbles then you know it's not wet enough and then also if it just kind of like splats you know it's too wet so that's kind of how I gauge the consistency that I like to use um, with the paper creep. I always think it's a good idea to use a release agent in your mold. I'm using just cheap canola oil spray. You can use whatever you may have on hand like um, Vaseline, just you know, olive oil, whatever you have. Just make sure it's a nice thin coat. Then I mix the paper creep one more time. And if you've seen my videos before, you know that I use, like to use what I call the hamburger patty method or hamburger method. So I take a handful of the paper creep and I combine it together in my hands to make sort of like a patty. Um, and then I will put that, I start at the bottom of the mold and I compact it down all the way around the bottom. And I like to do about like an, an inch, maybe three fourths inch. And as you can see, I'm just putting those patties on the bottom and compacting it down. Um, the more you compact it down and really press it up against the bottom and the sides, the less of those, I guess, like divots on the outside that you will see in the finished product. So I also like to use the lid of my spray to really push it down in there and make sure it's nice and compact. And then basically from there, I'm just doing that same method with the hamburger patties and putting them on the sides of the mold all the way to the top. So once you're finished placing the paper crete in the mold, what I like to do is put it in a plastic bag for a few days and then take it out of the plastic bag and let it, and then let it sit to dry out for as long as it takes. And right now it's taking a little bit longer than it normally does because of the cool temperatures. But as you can see, it turned out really well, straight out of the mold. It is um, fairly cured and dried out at this point. And I decided to go in and sand it because I've been seeing a lot of those videos on how people make the trotso style like coasters and things like that. And they usually will sand it down to reveal more of the color. So I did that and I got um, a few different styles of like sanding pads and I filled the saucer with water and I just wet sanded it until I was satisfied with how it was looking. Then I rinsed it off just to make sure it was nice and clean and as you can see the colors really pop when the background is darker because the colors I chose were so light. And as you can see here, after it has dried for a few days, the gray color is really light and I wanted to darken that. So I have a little setup here with the Lazy Susan and then I put some parchment paper down to protect that. 
and then a lid so that I can so that it's elevated a little bit and I can paint all the way down to the bottom really easily um, because I mean it looks cool like this but I wanted the gray to be a little bit darker so in a future video I'm gonna try to do the base darker so color the paper Crete mixture from the get-go and see how that looks but I also really wanted to try out a new sealer that I got. I actually bought it specifically for bird baths because on their website, and I will link the article down below, it's Ghost Shields um, product and they have two specific products that they have that they recommended in this article for sealing bird baths. So I ordered the sample sizes of both of those and this one I'm using today in the video is their gloss version so this will have a gloss sheen to it so total I did three coats of this and I think because paper Crete is so porous it just was absorbing it a lot more than probably like just regular concrete wood so on this first day I applied two coats and I let it dry overnight and this is what it looked like so it definitely did darken it, but as you can see, there are parts that are shiny and then parts that aren't. Um, so the darker parts are shinier than others, which is a cool effect, but I wanted the whole thing to be dark and shiny. So I added another coat and this time I used a larger brush, so it made it go a lot faster. <laughs> So once that final coat was dry, I did go in and drill a drainage hole and I did not seal the bottom. I just didn't think it was worth it or necessary really, but that would be totally up to you. Ta-da! So this turned out better than I could have expected. I think the gloss is perfect, but I am excited to try the non-gloss version as well. So look for that in an upcoming video. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you think this is cool? What colors would you try? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.